I applied to a number of schools uh, when I graduated uh, with a PhD in 1962. I chose University of Louisiana Monroe, which was then called Northeast Louisiana State College, uh, because they wanted to start a uh, program in vertebrate zoology. And I said, my gosh, that, uh, that fits me perfectly. Uh, I had no one to look over my shoulder and say, this is the way I did it, because it was brand new. So I spent uh, the remaining five or six weeks I had in uh, Stillwater, Oklahoma, collecting all kinds of vertebrate animals, uh, not only fish, which was a big part of it, but uh, rodents, mammals, uh, salamanders, toads, frogs, snakes, all of us I get hold on and uh, uh, packed them into a U-Haul trailer and headed to Monroe, Louisiana. I think probably the, the start uh, of our uh, uh, amassing a pretty good uh, uh, collection of fishes would be uh, we had a mountain field biology course in Batesville, Arkansas for six consecutive summers uh, starting in 1965, I, th I think up through 1971, which we did nothing but collect lower vertebrates, amphibians, reptiles, lots of fishes. We were out on the White River, and we worked from dawn till well in the night. Every day we were up there. Then another factor that uh, was, I think, instrumental in numbers would be the fact that we took uh, uh, a, an annual field trip to the pristine waters of eastern Tennessee, Virginia, uh, uh, North Carolina, a few in South Carolina, Alabama, each year for 22 consecutive years. About the same time each year, using about the same methods of uh, collecting. So we had we we were able to to uh, generate quite a base through the 22 years of environmental changes from uh, trip to trip, from year to year. The major contributors were my students alone, my, my graduate students. Like I say, of the 71 students I had, I imagine, and I'm guessing that probably three-fourths of them uh, did their work with fishes and fisheries biology. I had uh, several uh, institutions that uh, uh, were we had exchange programs with, I'm thinking particularly about Carnegie Museum back in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s was a, uh, a very uh, highly respected museum uh, for the research uh, animals. Uh, another one was Baylor University, uh, had an active exchange program. We also uh, were able to receive specimens from institutions that went through the same process that we just did when their collections were divested. Uh, Louisiana Tech University, just down the road, uh, decided that uh, they would divest their, uh, most of their vertebrate collections. Mississippi State, at least in part, back in the uh, uh, early or late 90s, early 2000s, over the last 30 years, this uh, collection, the growth of this collection has been pretty much linear with an increase in lots and species and numbers. Uh, as an example, uh, our last uh, entry before divestment last fall, I believe it was nearly uh, in the close to 83,000 lots, which are jars. And each one of those jars or lots contain from one to as many as 2,000 individuals. So it's been estimated uh, and extrapolated that we probably had in the neighborhood of three to six million uh, specimens. Critic 
Corps of Engineers has provided many, many valuable specimens to, to what was uh, our collection. Uh, primarily through their efforts with their collections through the Lower Mississippi uh, Basin. Because that's an area that I hurried over. It's not aesthetically pleasing. In fact, some of it I've hesitated to even wait into. But, but through the years, uh, hurrying to the pristine mountain rivers in uh, Tennessee and North Carolina and so forth, I would pass them completely. So we did not have a good representative of the uh, fishes of the uh, Lower Mississippi Valley. Through the many, many efforts of the uh, Corps in their collections and their environmental work, they have really supplemented. I've had some really satisfying uh, students through the years that have uh, worked uh, uh, at rather uh, uh, high level prestigious jobs uh, uh, through this particular uh, endeavor. For instance, we've had uh, secretaries of, of a state game and fish uh, commission. We've had uh, directors of zoos. We've had uh, uh, many, many in state government jobs in dealing with fisheries. We've had a good number in the federal government dealing uh, with fisheries, not only with uh, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Corps of Engineers, and, and so forth, environmental groups. As a naturalist, I have no problem uh, discerning the value of these uh, collections of fishes, or for any natural history collection is that as such. Uh, unfortunately, it's not shared by those that aren't actually educated in the field of natural science or biology or, or what, whatever. It, it's a constant struggle to try to get them to understand that we're dealing with a a, a source here that's that's literally a, a library of instead of books of animals that can tell you so much about what was what is and what possibly will become by looking at the the changes and uh, looking at the the uh, uh, populations from place to place throughout the years determining if they have moved and why they have moved and what's the cause and so forth. There is so much can, can be learned, but I think in this day of uh, uh, environmental uh, issues, it becomes even more valuable. And you wipe these things out, you've lost a great, great uh, source of information. Another value of these collections uh, would be the uh, the support that is that these collections give and, and the necessary uh, uh, entity to the fishes of books. Uh, I uh, uh, published fishes of freshwater fishes of Louisiana back in 1974 and relied greatly on our existing collections that we made from the state of Louisiana uh, incorporated into our collection to uh, uh, publish the book. And through the years, we've had fishes of Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, all of which at least uh, have used our collection in part to uh, supplement the uh, uh, at least distributional information from our collections. I've had the uh, pleasure of working with uh, uh, several well-known ichthyologists. Uh, uh, Carter Gilbert, Florida, comes to mind. Herb Beauchamp, Alabama. Dave Etnire, Tennessee. Uh, mentioned uh, uh, Henry Robinson, a uh, dear friend of mine, and uh, and Royal Sutkus at Tulane. Uh, all of these uh, uh, 
individuals wanted desperately to learn and to discover and that was their their goal in life to find something meaningful that would would uh, be beneficial to understanding the environment we live in. As we look at the present day, we're finding that as we lose our programs, our university programs in the field biologies, ichthyology, fisheries biology, and in turn losing our collections, we're having no recruitment. There's no one to follow us to follow those previously mentioned uh, to continue this work of what we treasured through the years. The collection now has been divested to uh, Tulane University, which uh, certainly appreciated our plight and was my first uh, uh, choice. Since it's uh, in this region, they already have a monstrous collection, uh, which um, actually uh, was uh, a problem with many of the universities that would be interested in the fishes. They simply did not have room for such a, a massive collection. Uh, Tulane was able to do that. One of the problems that uh, uh, universities are faced with is the uh, cost of maintaining such a collection. Uh, today we're faced with uh, uh, space because a, a properly arranged collection such as uh, the ULM collection uh, uh, would occupy the better part of a football field and uh, uh, that space is valuable to universities. The actual physical uh, building has to meet uh, uh, certain standards for fire protection and, and uh, the, uh, the comp compactors that come with the more modern collections today are costly. It's my hope that no collections will ever be totally thrown away that someone will find a, hope, a home for them. It looks like more and more uh, they're going to go to well-established collections and the smaller museum collections uh, won't exist. As I recall my early years in the mountains of West Virginia, uh, one of my uh, favorite things to do was to accompany my father when he trout fished and uh, I think that's probably where I got my first real interest in fishes when I was allowed to hold uh, his, his catches and, uh, and I can see that enthusiasm that I had then uh, portrayed with the young people that we have coming through the museum each day. They are amazed, they're excited, they want to see more and learn, and it's my hope that through the years it's not diminished, that they will have programs always to incite that interest in natural history. <laughs>